Hey what's up guys this is Apollo Uchiha here back with another part of what if Naruto was separated from his family and before continuing this video if you haven't please leave a like and subscribe to my channel and yesterday I uploaded the next part of what if Naruto and Konoha will watch their future if you haven't checked that out please check that out as well and yeah if you haven't please leave a like and subscribe to my channel and without further ado let's continue our story chapter 12 flashback Oni no Kuni priestess compound inside Ushio Gakure would like to propose an alliance once we have dealt with the threat of Morio and his followers. Kushina, my friend, I have seen in my vision that Oni no Kuni and Numa no Kuni, land of the swamps, will be under the flag of Uzu. My country will become better and strong under your leadership, replied the priestess. A good vision, indeed, commented Minato. The three chuckled while Miroku agreed. Yes, I understand your role as descendants of the sage. I will help you with your guests and quests. Balance has been absent for long, but soon, when you emerge again, Konha will be the first to receive retribution. We have an understanding then, right? said Kushina. Yes, Oni no Kuni and Numa no Kuni will not just be allies to Uzu, but will become under its flag as well. The remaining of your country will be up to you, Miroko-san, said Minato. In my vision, when the country becomes a part of Uzu, the whole land will be placed with seals to seal off all demons forever, thus making it no longer a land of demons. Also, I've seen whirlpools surrounding my country to protect itself from intruders. An extension of Uzushio Gakure indeed, the couple mused. Yes. I propose of Oni no Kuni to become official as one and renamed to Ni Uzu no Kuni. Very well. We have an agreement then. Hi. Before we go, I would li also like to tell you about another vision. Oh, and that is, you will be sending two squads of storm to Konoha to save two children. One of them is a girl who the last of their clan that specialize in Genjutsu. The girl is born with a weaker body and has a problem with her head. The other is a boy who is born without chakra but still wishes to become a shinobi. I have seen them trying to enroll in Konoha's academy but was not allowed to due to their conditions. They will become great assets to Uzu in future. I see. Thank you for the information. I will have the two identified individuals and rescue them from Konoha's clutches. Priestess compound outside. And then I was rescued and brought to Uzu. There I started to have a good life. Naruto finished his story about himself as he and Shion sat by the rock near the castle's Koi Pound. Oh, and here I thought, I've had the worst life. I'm so sorry, Naruto-kun. Hey, it's alright. You do not have to apologize, you know. It's Konoha's fault, not yours. Hmm, yeah, you're right. Of course I am, Naruto cheered, making Shion giggle. Anyways, what about you? Me? Well, I grew up alone. I have no friends. At least, not that I remember. My age is... Everyone my age is scared of me. I only have my mother and my personal assistants with me. But even my assistants are scared of me sometimes. Why? Naruto asked. I have this power where I can see people's stats as well as mine. See that... What will happen before they are put to grave danger? Oh, I see. I understand if you're scared of me now. The girl whispered sadly as she bowed her head. Hey, don't be sad. I'm not scared of you. I think it's actually cool for seeing someone's death. In that way we can prevent it from happening, right? Shion's eyes went, yes, but still. Her eyes fell again. The others automatically think they will die. They do not understand. Well, I do understand and I'm your friend, remember? Friend? Shion asked, staring at Naruto's blue eyes. Naruto blushed at this because Shion was cute. Yes, we're friends, the boy said as he grabbed the girl and hugged her. Don't worry, I won't leave you just because you foresee my death or yours. Together we will change that and stay alive. Believe it. Shion was now blushing madly due to the boy's actions. Her face was now as red as a tomato. Friends? Y yes, I'm, I'm friends with Naruto-kun. She started out as Naruto was hugging her. Meanwhile, Naruto's siblings were of course watching and were giggling like fangirls. They were surprised when the boy suddenly hugged Shion. Oh my, Naruto-kun's the man, Narumi said between giggles. Oh, I'm so proud, Minako said as he too tried to suppress his laughter. He's our baby brother, alright. He's a lady killer. Don't you agree, sis? Yeah, 
Miho and Mio both said. Next day, Land of Marsh, Morio's prison. <laughs> Pathetic mortals, you think you can defeat me? The demon lord said as he encircled the family and prepared for another set of attack. The Uzumaki Namekaze family arrived 10 minutes ago and immediately battled the demon. The family easily slaughtered the cultists that were guarding the entrance. Yomi and his other four lieutenants were able to fight a little longer with the use of demonic energy. In the end, they were defeated by Kushina by using the human path, pulling their souls out of them while also gaining valuable information. Weak! You're all weak! We've been battling for some time now and I've only received little damage. Morio taunted. Unknown to the family, unknown to the him, the family have been discreetly placing seals around the area while they moved around while the demon tried to kill them. Meanwhile, Naruto concentrated in a distance while he meditated and gathered chakra. Mio and Miho stood by him to protect him from the demon's attack. Naruto kun, were ready. Kushina called to her son as she dodged a demonic tentacle. She rushed gracefully and cut the tentacle with her sword. Ah! Die, you filthy mortals! Minato, Kushina, Narumi, and Minako finished placing the seals and started firing waves of jutsus at the demon while dodging at the same time. Naruto finally finished gathering chakra with the help of Kurama and opened his eyes. He bit his thumb and smeared blood on his shoulder where the seal was located and slammed the ground. Kyochase no jutsu! Watatatsumi! The area became covered with smoke, allowing the four humans to take cover and retreat the to Naruto's side. When the smoke cleared, there was now a great dragon, five times bigger and longer than the normal dragon. Naruto stood on top of the dragon's head with his arms crossed. Ah, it's been so long, the last time I've been summoned to the lands of human. Well done, Naruto. But the Tatsumi mused as he stared at the demon with calculating eyes. You! Morius screeched angrily at the dragon. You do not have the right to interfere. Be gone! Now, now, I cannot do that. I have every right to be here since my master has summoned me. Now it is time for you to return to where you came from and never come back here. But Tatsumi said in a calm manner, No! I will not! The demon roared in anger and charged at the dragon. Watatsumi simply dodged and flew around the area while dodging golden steam and fire. The seals placed by the family glowed bright as the dragon king strengthened them. The demon, however, did not notice and simply thought the attack was meant for him. Ha! Ah, that was it? You did not even hit me, Mori taunted. Oh, this guy is an idiot, all right, Naruto commented. Yes, he is Naruto. Watatatsumi chuckled as he flew around and continued giving more power boosts to the seals. Ah, who are you calling an idiot? Moryu angrily asked. Well, duh, of course you. You're an idiot, Naruto taunted. The demon angrily charged at the dragon head on com completely forgetting about the others. Thanks to the boy's taunts, Naruto's parents and siblings were given the opportunity to place the final sets of seals while the demon attacked blindly with rage for being called an idiot. The others began drawing lines and forming a huge hexagon si seal with the them six standing at the each points. Krama, who was watching through her host eyes, agreed with Naruto's statements. Yes, that demon is an idiot. Who turns their back on their enemies? And to think that he was considered as a king in his dimension. Such a shame. Let's just be thankful that Moria is stupid. In that way, we the other can work with the final seal. And then we can finally seal him back to wherever he came from. And hopefully he will never return. What, missing Shion already? Krama teased. Hey, I didn't say anything about that. Naruto shouted, blushing. You did it, but I can read your mind, remember? I'm sealed inside of you. I can feel your emotions. The boy chose not to reply as his face was now red. Krama just watched with amusement. You slippery serpent. Come here so I could kill you. Morio screamed in frustration while Watatatsumi dodged the demon's attack and flew around. Naruto then noticed that the others had finished with the seal and were waiting for them to lure the demon inside. The boy silently ordered the dragon king to fly down near the hexagon. Morio followed and flew down as well. Once again, he failed to notice the seals and were not beginning to glow brighter unknown to him. Uzumaki ceiling. Demon Soul Train. The family shot it as the demon neared the hexagon. The seal around the area activated, quickly draining him from his power. Ah! What is this? The demon screamed as it fell down, landed inside the hexagon due to his power being drained. 
he could not move and get away from the hexagon seal, nor finally noticing it too late. Uzumaki Kinjutsu, Demon Reverse Summoning and Sealing, Onimon, Kai, Demon Kid, Open. The hexagon seal glowed purple and formed into a prism, trapping the demon inside. In another dimension, a same hexagon seal appeared. Switch! They yelled, No! I will not return to my old place. This is where I belong. I shall rule here. Morio wailed as the whole prism glowed, but Tatsumi breathed golden fire at the seal, strengthening it. Morio's essence got transferred to the other dimension, bit by bit, until there was none of him left in this world. The seal glow slowly died down as well as the prism. That takes care of it. Well done, everyone, the dragon king commented. The family for their work as he let Naruto step off of his head. You have done well, Master Naruto. You have successfully summoned me to your realm without passing out. I look forward to next time you will summon me in the battle. Watatasumi bowed to the family and then to the boy before poofing back to Terra. Yay, we did it! Naruto cheered, making the others chuckle. Kushina then picked him up and kissed him. Minato ruffled the boys here, feeling proud. Come on, let's go back to the priestess. Oni no Kuni, priestess compound balcony. Miroko, Shion, and the Uzumaki Namikaze family, and Numa no Kuni's acting leaders were gathering by the castle's balcony to discuss the country's future. All residents of Unin and Nom Numa were also gathered down below, listening to their leaders' discussion. Now that the threat of Morio has been dealt with, we may now look forward to our country's development with the seals away. Of all demons, my role as the priestess of the two countries finally comes to an end. Miroko started. As we have discussed yesterday, Oni and Numa will become under the Uzumaki flag and will be renamed as New Uzu Shogakure. She said while looking at the Numa standing leaders. She then stood and bowed to the Uzukage. I, Miroko, priestess and standing leader of the Oni no Kuni, pledge my country's undying loyalty and friendship to the Uzumaki clan. We, the tribe leaders of Numa no Kuni, have been waiting for a rightful leader to lead our country to greatness. Now that you're here, we pledge our undying loyalties and friendship to your clan, Uzumaki clan. May you lead us to greatness, the leader said as they two bowed to the Uzushio Uzukake. The Uzukake then stood up and said, I, Uzumaki Namekaze Kushina, Uzukage of the new Uzushio Gakure, accept your pledges and will make sure to develop both countries to greatness. May our friendship and camaraderie last forever, down to our future descendants. I now declare this land to be called Ni Uzushio Gakure. Oni no Kuni will be now known as Ni Uzo's first city, while Numa no Kuni will be the second city. Uzumaki Namekaze Narumi, I hereby appoint you as the first city's Uzukage. Uzumaki Namekaze Minako, I appoint you as the second city's Uzukage. May the two of you become just and great leaders, listening to your people and becoming their inspiration, Kushina said. Nako and Narumi were beyond shock. Their parents did not tell them about the two countries becoming one with Uzu, and now they were appointed leaders. Although surprised with the announcement, they both stepped forward and presented themselves to the crowd. We accept our appointment and pledge to our best of our capabilities to our countries and cities. The crowds then began to clapping and cheering for their new leaders. Those at the balcony were also clapping and congratulating the two of them that were appointed. Naruto was jumping up and down while holding hands with Shion. The two were cheering this, of course, didn't go unnoticed, making the two other smirks. Later that night, after the announcement, there was, of course, a celebration. Miroku then informed the Uzukage and her family that they will be moving to the Uzushio Gakure. Naruto and Shion were the ones who were very happy with this. They will be growing up together and attending the academy. Shion have already told her mother that she would want to become a shinobi, and Miroku agreed. Development plans were also made that night. Storm squads will be sent to Niuzu to seal off the remaining demons. Narumi and Minako will be receiving advances lessons in the leading a country. They already received their lessons back in Uzu. Now they were officially Kages. They will be now getting their advanced lessons with the help of two countries' advisors. Flashback end. Present time. Uzushio Gakure's office. All right, let us get started to the business, Kushina said. Right, May replied. We bring news from Kiri about Konoha as well. The Uzukage nodded, urging her sister to speak. Konoha has sent diplomats to Kiri for 
forging an alliance. The developments were Hiyashi of the Yuga clan and Fugaku of the Uchiha clan. They of course brought gifts to please the Uzukage, they trailed off and started to stare at Minato. What are these gifts? The scroll for the Harishin and the Rasengan. Silence. I'm sorry. Can you please repeat that statement? The scrolls for the Harishin and the Rasengan. Those are the gifts Konha offered to Kiri. May said. She took out two scrolls from her pocket. Everyone except me and Mikoto were dumbfounded. But how? I imagined to invade their minds without them knowing. The scrolls came from Danzo. He had it secretly copied and hid it inside the root base. Right now there are two copies. The ones hidden in Danzo's root base and these. May said as he showed them the scrolls. So you managed to get them? Minato commented a bit relieved. Yes, I managed to quickly make copies when I inspected them. The ones they currently have have been tampered with. The seals and instructions were edited. Should they try doing the Harishin, the area where they will put the seal will simply melt. The resting on they just end up getting their arms blown up. Ricotta said, Well done. Good quick thinking. Kushina said, Ricotta just smirked and waved it off. You're welcome. I was just doing what's right. Then it is no longer a problem should the Mizukage accept. The only thing we have to do is now destroy the copies that Danzo have. They probably made more copies for backup now. Right, anyway, here's more news. A few days before the Konha envoy arrived, me and my husband noticed that Yagra was acting off. When we made a secret investigation, we found out he was under a Ganjutsu, and a strong one, if I may add. We, can, we came to a conclusion that it was an Uchiha who placed it on him. The Ganjutsu is supposed to make him hate everyone with a bloodline. If we let it continue, there will be a bloodline purge in Kiri, and will eventually result in a civil war, May said. Everyone in the room smiled mischievously while Kushina spoke. I trust you have a plan to put this incident to our advantage. Of course, May said. We'll simply let it happen. Kiri will divide into two. Well, the alliance proposal by Konha will either be put on hold or accepted. I will be leading the rebels and the others will be fighting against us. After the civil war, I will reveal about Yagura being controlled by an Uchiha scanger. So Kiri will become hostile to Konoha then. By the time I will become Mizukage, Kiri declaring war and attacking Konoha will be easier. Everyone in the room laughed evilly after hearing Mei's plan. Perfect, Kushina said. All that left is Kumu and Eva. When the time comes, Kumu and Eva and Kiri will be attacking Konoha. In the end, we will make them see the irony. Three countries allied to destroy Ozu now allied once again to destroy Konoha. <laughs> Father's plan will be fulfilled. I'm going to find that Uchiha and shake his or her hand for controlling Yakura. <laughs> May said. They continue to talk and catch up about each other. May later then found out about Naruto's return and was excited to see her nephew, Uzushio Gakure, hospital, Sonata's private room. Naruto was currently sitting by the bed of the grandmother, his grandmother. Every day he will visit her and tell her story despite her being in coma. He just wished and finished telling his story about his visit to Oni no Kuni. With him were her Sasuke, Hinata, Fukara, Temari, Kankuro, and Shion. Bachan, this is Shion. She is my newest friend. She is the priestess Morocco's daughter. Uh, hello, Tsunade sama. I'm Shion. I hope you'll wake up soon. Yes, Bachan. I hope you wake up soon. Naruto said as he kissed her grandmother's forehead. Naruto then led his friends out of the room and decided to bring them to Ichiraku's. He hasn't seen Ayame for three days now as he thought of going there and also introducing her to Shion. Nobody noticed the necklace Tsunade was wearing glowed brightly when Naruto kissed her. Time skip. Following day, Uzukage's mansion, Naruto woke up early and quickly fixed his bed. He went to the bathroom to bathe. And when he finished, he ex ex excitedly wore his clothes. He ran up to his parents' room and kicked the door open. Ka-chan! Toho-chan! Wake up! He shouted and jumped up and down the bed. Naruto-kun? What? Ushna bolted up, startled. It's the first day of school! The boy squealed excitedly. What? Oh! Minato said as he also woke up, startled. The boy's parents chuckled as they noticed Naruto had his clothes on. He was wearing his shirt the wrong way. The supposed backside was on front. His pants were also a mess and as he wasn't able to wear them properly, the zipper was halfway open while the pants itself was worn inside out. His hair looked like a bird's nest while some areas still had shampoo bubbles. Someone's excited, I see, Kushina commented as she could not help but giggle at her son's antics. Why, yes, of course, I'm going to become a shinobi now, 
His parents simply chuckled at the boy's high energy. Well, you can't go to school with your uniform or your outfit like that. You wouldn't want the girls to see you like that, would you? Minato said. Huh? What do you mean? Look at yourself in the mirror, son, Kushina suggested while still giggling. Naruto did as ordered and finally noticed his outfit and hair. Oh, <laughs> I guess I was too excited. Come on now, let's get you properly groomed. Kushina took her son's hand and led him back to his room. Minato went downstairs and ordered the household to prepare breakfast. Naruto's siblings, who were sleeping on the separate rooms, also woke up due to the shouting. Tochan, what happened? I heard someone shouting, Narumi asked, as she found her father downstairs. There were more footsteps and Minako, Mio, and Miho also came down. What happened? The three of them asked. Minato simply chuckled as he brought out a camera and showed it to his children. The four checked the camera and started laughing as they saw the pictures of their baby brother running the corridor and barging in their parents' room up to where he checked himself in the mirror. This is so cute. <laughs> Narumi and Miho both squealed. So this is what Miroko-sama was talking about last night. I do not understand why she was giggling. She just told us to have the cameras ready. Minako said. We have these developed, right? Mio asked. Of course, Minato replied as he sipped his coffee. I would like extra copies of these, please, Narumi said. Yeah, me too. This will be good for future teasing, Minako said as he snickered. We're getting extra copies too. We're not going to fall behind, right, Mio? Yeah, Miho and Mio said simultaneously. Right, so... We'll be taking his pictures for his first day, Minato asked. We'll do it, the twins volunteer. Alright, you receive a C-rank payment for this. I'm sure you know this is important. Naruto-kun wasn't with us for five years. We'll need to treasure all these first things you do, right? Minato said, a bit sad. Hey, Dad, cheer up. Naruto-kun's with us now. We'll make sure Konoha won't lay a finger on him ever again, Rumi said with strong conviction. They also got pictures of Naruto summoning Wata Tatsumi for the first time, Naruto eating ramen for the first time, and also other important and happy memories. The pictures, of course, were taken secretly. Most of his early photos were taken with the help of drawing a memory out of someone's mind and printing, printing it on a scroll with the help of seals. Uzushio Gakure Academy After getting properly groomed and breakfast, Minato and Kushina walked their youngest to school with the twins secretly taking pictures. Kasan. I forgot my schedule table. Naruto turned to his mother as he scratched his nose. I got it right here, Naruto-kun. Oh, thanks. Enjoy your first day, son, Minato said as he patted the boy's head. Yes. Naruto cheered. His parents kissed him before they let him run to his room for his first subject. Naruto went to his room and noticed there was nobody yet expect except him and his teacher. Hello, good morning. The teacher greeted. Good morning, sensei. You're early. The school's opening ceremony will start later in 21 minutes. Please take a seat for now. Right. Uh, thank you. Uh, Kira, I will be your sensei in physical education every Monday for injutsu and dancing. Your senseis for your other subjects is, will be your sensei in your PE on that day as well. Right, Kira sensei. Thank you. The boy said as he found a seat and reviewed his schedule. Let's see. For Monday, I have PE in the morning, history around middle and injutsu in the afternoon. It's not a PE in the morning again. Oh, PE every day. Right? Anyway, I got weapons mastery and taijutsu after. I got chakra manipulation and elemental manipulation every Wednesday, Thursday, summoning and kenjutsu, medical ninjutsu and kinjutsu every Friday. All right. Hmm, I wonder what kind of dancing Kira sensei was talking about. Why don't you ask her then? Grandma suggested. Kira, who was watching him, spoke. You're probably wondering what I meant by dancing. You see, I was your mother's student before I started teaching. For her, kenjutsu is a form of dance. Actually, battling is dancing. When you're battling, you're technically dancing with that. Fun, right? So, that's your mother's term when she fights. For me, though, it's kenjutsu. So, yeah, I will be your sensei in your kenjutsu classes. You will only hear this term once since you're the only person here. Try using that as one of your phrases. You see... There will be a time where you will be famous throughout the world. When you battle someone, they will know they are screwed when you say it. Kira said winking at the boy. Naruto grinned as he understood what his sensei meant. He already had a catchphrase in mind. Anyways, since you're the first student to arrive here, I'm going to give you an award for being the early bird. I'm giving you an advanced scroll in Kenjutsu. Enjoy! Kira took out three scrolls from her desk, 
drawer and handed them to Naruto. Wow, really? Thank you, Sensei. You're welcome. If you have questions, feel free to ask. I, I'll just sit here and review the lessons plan while we wait for your classmates. Since I will be your homeroom Sensei, I will be the one to welcome you formally with the classes. Your Sensei in history will be Moroko sama I'm sure you already know her. Naruto nodded and took out his book in basic Fujitsu and began reading. Slowly, the room got filled with students. When the room got filled, Naruto was sitting in the middle of Shion and Hinata. The Saboko siblings sat behind them. In front of Naruto sat Fu, and besides Fu was a girl wearing glasses that identified herself as Karin. Sasuke arrived a bit late, so he sat besides Karin. Naruto got excited when he finally learned who Karin was and then immediately became friends. The two were bookworms, and that's what made them bond easily. The ceremony started with Kira speaking in front and welcoming everybody. She had her students go in front and introduce themselves. When it was not done, every girl in the room except Tayuya, who was sitting at the far corner of the class, was blushing at the boy, while the boys thought of him as someone very cool. After the ceremony, they went outside for their physical training. Uzushio Gakure, short lines, a hooded figure, could be seen approaching the city slowly. The mysterious man strongly reeked of snake and snakes. As he took another step closer, he found himself surrounded by twelve squads of storm. Why that many? The Ozunin sensed that this man was not simple nin, but very dangerous. He radiated an aura that can even rival to Kaga's level nins. The hooded figure chuckled and removed his hood to reveal his face and raised his hands in a surrounding way. I am Orochimaru, the snake sani. I am friends with the Uzukage and Uzukage before her and I came in peace. We strongly advise you not move until the Uzukage arrives to check you herself. Make a move and we will immediately think of you as an enemy. Please wait while we call for the Uzukage, said Kaede, the storm commander. I understand. I will not make any attempts to move. I will wait for her here, said Orochimaru. Uzukage's office. Kushina was currently signing construction approvals for new Uzu. She was interpreted when a storm appeared. Excuse me, Uzukage-sama. There is a man by the shorelines who claims himself as Orochimaru, the snake son. And Kaede-sama and 12 more squads of storm are currently watching him. So it was him I was sensing. Thank you. I'll be there shortly. Please alert all Jonins to hire while I confirm this person's identity. Hi. Dozukage then concentrated and called to her husband using a mental link. Minatsukun. Please be at the shorelines ASAP. After the call, she vanished from her office in a red flash. Ushio Gakure shorelines. Minato and Kushina arrived in a yellow and red flash respectively. When they inspected the scene, they found a cloak figure raising a hand in surrender while the storm surrounded him. At ease, it's him, the Uzukage ordered. The storm then lowered their weapons, but still had a defensive stance. When, Naruto, when Nona chan told me about you and your village, I was very surprised. It's a good thing I sent Anko chan to Konoha at that time. I have a good feeling that it was Uzu who raided Konoha twice. Am I right? You're right, about that Orochimaru sensei, replied Minato. Ah, Minato kun. It's good to see you back, the realm of the living," the snake son commented. The blonde simply smirked and walked towards his sensei and hugged his sensei and adopted the father. Kushina did the same. Come on, let us get inside the village. You might want to meet my children. Also, I think it is time that you met your godson. I'm sure Nono told you about him already. Let's make this official now, shall we? Kushina asked happily as they casually walked back towards the village. Of course, it would be an honor becoming godfather. To one of your children. That's good then. Well, now he's five, so you have five years worth of gifts to present to him. Kushina clapped hands happily, making Minata and Orochimaru sweater. Kona Gakure, root underground main base. Four root Anbus walk casually and entered the leader's quarters. These four were actually storm hanged through the four high ranking Anbus of root they killed earlier using the human path. They were able to absorb all their memories and easily pretended to be them as they infiltrated the base to look for the scrolls Tanzo copied. The corpses were sent to Uzushio for further investigation. They were tasked by the Uzushio and Uzukage to search the base of the illegal copied of Rasengan's and Hershian scrolls and well as possibly other scroll and jutsus. Hanged as four of the high ranking route, they could easily get access inside and were not bothered by anyone. As of that moment, they were the only high ranking members inside the base. The rest were out searching for a cure to wake their leader for their comatose state. After an hour through expansion, they managed to find 
three extra copies of Rasengan and the Harishin. One was placed inside the root leader desk drawers, another was found hidden in the safe box where other stolen items were hidden. They found 12 masks that they recognized as masks of the Uzumaki clan and that allowed them to resurrect someone dead. Upon further inspection, they realized that the masks were not original, even though replicas they were stolen to each one of it that activates when worn. Should someone try to wear it, they will die. Simple. Besides the masks, they found a dozen of Harishin kunais. The storm decided to destroy and replace them with fake ones. The last pair of scrolls was found in the root library. Other than Rasengan and Harishin, they found scrolls that contained Kinjutsu from other villages. One said contained about black and white lightning release. Another one was about storm release. They also found a scroll of dust release. The set of scrolls was of Moketan. The storm took the liberty of taking the set scrolls there first task done, they headed to the newly rebuilt Hokage Tower and waited for the distraction. They needed to get inside and retrieve the remaining scrolls, Konha Orphanage. A boy was a boy with bushy brows and long hair that touched his bottoms and wearing simple shirt could be seen running alone by the backyard of the orphanage. The boy had no friends and kids around his age and wanted nothing to do with him as they considered him their inferior because of his inability to produce chakra. Rockley just tried to enroll the academy a few days ago, but due to this condition, he was not allowed to. His now former friends got accepted and now left him alone. Unknown to him, two hooded figures were watching him train. They were hidden in a nearby bush and were waiting for the boy to run near. As the boy got near, he heard a noise. Psst, in here, quick, hide here. Like any other boy, of course, he got curious and did as ordered. As he got inside, he was saw two cloak figures that had their hoods off. Lee figured that they were adults. One of them handed him a cloak that looked like the one they were wearing. Here, quickly wear this. This will make you invisible. Wow, cool, thanks. The boy quickly wore it and looked at it himself. I can still see myself. Of course you can. You're the one wearing it. You can also see us because we're wearing the same cloak. Put the hold on, put the hood on and we'll get out of this bush. Don't worry, people won't see us. We three can only see each other. They got out of the bushes and sat by the bench. The two storm decided to get straight to the business. Listen, we know about you wanting to become and accepted into the academy, but you got rejected due to your condition. We have two questions for you. Here is the first. What is your dream? Hmm. I like to become one of the greatest shinobi and respected by people and accept me even if I can't produce chakra. The board nodded and then said, Second question, would you still become a shinobi even if you have been rejected by Konha Academy? The boy's eyes eagerly were shining as he nodded. Good, we can help you become one, but you're going to have to come with us. You already know that the people here are discriminatory. In our village, we do not discriminate people. We help each other out as we can. If you come with us, you will be guaranteed a new home and will be able to attend the academy and fulfill your dream of becoming a shinobi. So would you like to come with us? We'll give you time to think. The boy spoke almost immediately after the mysterious person's statement surprising the two. People here treat me bad. The orphanage lady is also bad. Those who I thought were my friends no longer talk to me. The academy rejected me. Nobody wanted to adopt me. I don't want to live here anymore. Please take me with you. All right, we're taking you to the Uzushio Gakure. One of them said, smiling. The other patted his head and said, Before we go there, we have to wait for another kid. We're also bringing her with us. My friends are currently looking for her while we went here for you. Oh, do I know this girl? I'm sure not. If you do, you see, she's currently locked in a prison. But why? Kona thinks of her as a demon. But they're wrong. You see, she was born very weak and also had a demon inside of her mind. The demon take control of her body and causes destruction. Instead of helping her get rid of the demon, they locked her in the prison. That's bad. It wasn't her fault. She didn't ask for this. Yes, that is bad. Now don't worry, my friends are going to help her escape prison. They will also seal off the demon that controls her body. For now, let's go to the forest and hide while we wait for them. Alright, please lead the way. Konoha Prison, High Security Prison, Yakumo Kurama cell. Said girl was currently sitting in her bed, waiting for something to happen. She was thinking of ways to escape, but her whole body was sealed. She could not call upon the power of Ido, the demon inside of her, to break free as it 
had been sealed off. She was interrupted from her thoughts when she heard metal clanking. She stood up and went to inspect the source of the noise. She was surprised when she found guards of her cell lying dead with their heads slit off. She jumped in fright when she noticed the killers. There were two of them and were wearing hooded cloaks. But as one of them approached her main cell, Yakuma retreated back in fight. The hooded figures began drawing seals on the metal gate. After about five seconds, the seals glowed before melting the tower down. Come here. Don't worry. We're not going to harm you. We came here to rescue you. The girl slowly approached the person. A part of her told her to believe them and let her escape. It's all right. Now we're going to seal, put a seal on your forehead before we remove your restriction seals placed by Konha. The seal will apply on you. Will forever seal Ido. The demon will no longer bother you after. We're going to send you. We're, we're going to send it back to that demon world. You know its name? Yakumo commented. Yes. We're talking about a demon here. And yes, don't ask how we know about it. We're taking you to Ulshio Gakure. It will be your new home. You will not be imprisoned there. You will be able to live a normal life. Attend academy if you want and gain friends. What do you say? Yes, I'm coming with you. Take me out of this hellhole, please. The girl said as tears blurred her vision. After sealing the demon off, the storm removed the girl's seal. They were placed by Konoha. Yakumo was now free. All right, we're heading to the forest first. There are people waiting for us there. There's another kid we rescued from Konoha's clutches. What's your companion doing? Oh, don't mind him. He's tagging the place with explosive seals. This place will blow up in 15 minutes. This is why we need to go now. We'll be safe ahead of them before they realize you're missing. Here, wear this cloak. Cool. Kona Forest. Rockley group arrived and waited for only three minutes. They created Yakumo's group and immediately took off. We're going to a waterfall a few kilometers near the fire, body, the fire, country, fire country's border. Our transport will be waiting there. Hokage-sama. Oh, sorry. Hokage's tower. The squad that raided the root base earlier quickly went inside. Two minutes after they heard the explosion, the village was immediately put on a red alert when sort of we heard news about high security prison being blown up. The Hokage, along with his Anbu, immediately headed there. The storm quickly searched the tower for the scrolls and founded it. They escaped unnoticed and headed to the waterfall. The cloak they wore were applied with seals, making them invisible even to the Byakugan of Yugas. It masked their presence as well as their chakra, keeping them from getting. Noticing by their enemies, Uzushio Gakure, Uzukage's office. So, you wish to make an alliance with Uzu? Minato asked as he sat opposite to his sensei. Yes, Utagakure needs allies. Since it's new, it will need all the help it can get. Once it gets developed enough, other villages will most likely begin to notice it. Then it will be troublesome. Replied Orochimaru, I understand. We will agree to this alliance. You should also ask the Kazakaki and make an alliance with Suna. We are currently allied with them. Kushina said as she took out a folder. Here, these are the alliance papers. Just read them and sign. It contains the same contract we made with Suna. The snake Sani nodded and took the papers and read it. After a few moments, he performed the seal ritual and caught the ring. Thank There you go. Congratulations on your new village, Sensei. Or should I now call you Otokage Dono? The Otokage said, making the man's mark. You finally achieved your dream. You now lead a village. Thank you, Minato-kun. Kushina chan with your aid, Otogakure will grow strong and right. I will make sure my people won't become like Konoha. I'm sure you will, Sensei, Minato said. The Shodai and the Nandai and the Nidame are probably rolling in their graves now. Their village treated the dark path when they left it to Sarutobi and the others, or Chimar said in disgust. Konoha facing its last year. When Naruto-kun is ready, we will burn it to the ground. Kiri, Kumo, and Iwa will soon follow them, the Uzukage said. They put their conversation in a halt when one of the seals in the Uzukage does clothed. Minato-kun understood. I'm going. I'll see you later, Sensei, Minato said as he kissed his wife and shook his Sensei's hand before vanishing in a yellow flash. I'll be returning to my hotel room, or probably stroll around the village, and place you called... And place you called... Re recommend to me... Oh, I see. It's a uh, misprinting. Any place you could recommend to me? <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, well, you might want to visit Ichiraku Ramen. They'll tell you how they got there. I see. I'll see you later then. Orshimaru said as he stood up and nodded to the Uzukage and then left the office. A few minutes later, there was another yellow flash. Minato was back with the two squads of Storm and two kids. Uzushio Gakure Academy. Alright, class. 
That's all for today. For your assignment, memorize and practice your seals writing and stroke. Remember, drawing the perfect symbol is important in making seals. One wrong stroke can make you imitate that. I'll see you again next week. Hi, Sensei. Thank you for today's lesson. The whole class replied. Kira nodded and left them off to the room. See you tomorrow, guys. Mom and Dan told me to come home today earlier. I don't know why, though. Naruto told his friends as they got out of the room. Uzukage's mentioned. The Uzumakis are born with a strong immunity against poisons. Tsunade was put into coma due to the stress over her body, being forced to close and open her chakra coils and muscles for the immediate restoration. Now her whole system not responding. With the use of the Yamato no Orochi's venom, her system will function once again as the venom enters her body. Since the venom comes from a god summoned and cannot be found normally in the realm of humans, the venom will be foreign to the body, causing the antibiotics to work and function to fight the venom. Since Tsunade is an Uzumaki, she will not be harmed by the venom. Orochimaru explained as he showed the vial of venom to the family. So this is the snake god's venom. Yes, before I got that, I had to give him 500 human sacrifices. That many? Kushina was horrified. Yes, oh don't worry. Those sacrifices were criminals. During the first week of Otogaku reconstruction, a huge number of bandits tried to raid my village. They never saw it coming. They became Snake Chow. The snake standing chuckled as he leaned back in his seat. Wow, careful, Godfather. You defeated that many? An amazed Naruto asked. Orochimaru chuckled at the boy's comment and said, It was nothing. They weren't shinobis. It could have been a different story if they were. Hmm. But still, single-handedly wiped them out. Someday, Naruto-kun, the world will know you for single-handedly destroying an entire shinobi army. You have us, your family, to help you become strong. You will surpass me and your parents. Orochimaru stood and patted the godsend's head that he had. Now, let us go wake your godmother. What do you think? Uzukage's hospital, Tsunade's room. The family stood back and waited as the snake son injected the venom in Tsunade's system. They watched the monitor show the patient system work on the venom. The graph went high and low and then high again. Bachan! Naruto murmured as he walked closer to Tsunade's bed and held her hand. Everyone ex except Naruto was amazed as they noticed her necklace glow. Naruto was too focused watching his grandmother. To notice the Shoda's necklace. It's glowing, Kushina murmured. Naruto yelped when he felt her grandmother's finger twitch. Bajan! The monitor showed the patient's heart rate going back to normal. So Naruto continued to twitch. The first were her fingers, then her whole arm. After a few seconds, her eyebrows and mouth began to twitch. Kushina chan! Sonade whispered, making everyone eyes and walk closer. Kachan! Kushina said as she held out her mother's hand. As tear ran down her face. Kushina chan. Narumi chan, where are my babies? After being comatose for 18 years, Tsunade the slug sonin finally woke up and returned to the world of living. Ka chan! Tsunade koi. Rashi murmured as he too can't hold back the tears. Rashi kun, Kushina chan. The family got acquainted with Tsunade with the help of the Rinnegan. They were able to easily tell and show Tsunade what has happened during that 18 years. She was unconscious when they got the part of about Naruto. Tsunade grabbed the boy and hugged him tight. She vowed vengeance on Konoha. When they finished telling her everything, Tsunade thanked her old teammate for the venom that caused her to finally wake up. The following day was spread about Tsunade's recovery that were same night. The whole country was on a grand celebration today. Those who were on a mission for a call to honor the slug son in classes have been suspended and will be resuming in the next week. The school director and the Uzukage agreed for an upgrade in the school buildings and facilities. Now that the greatest medical nin has returned, there would be changes for the medical ninjas to subject. Uzukage mentioned dining hall. Everyone watched as their jaw dropped on the floor as Tsunade ate, or should I say, wolfed down the food that was served on her table, which was the whole table. Shizune, the slug sonny's apprentice, returned from her assigned mission last night. She cried in delight when she heard her master was recovered. As Tsunade was bedridden, she asked the Uzukage to send on a long-term mission as a spy. The pain was too much for her after the master Uchiha battle and left Tsunade in a comatose state. Kushina had ordered 
for her mission to be put to an end. Now that Tsunade was awoken, right now Shizune had a huge sweat drop as she watched her master move down the food. There were now more than 12 stack of huge bowls and she just kept eating more. Nom 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 Tsunade mumbled as she finished the last bowl that was served. She clapped happily when the household took away the empty plates and placed another buffet on her table. Tsunade sama, Shizune called. The woman simply raised her bro and continued to eat. Tsunade sama. Maybe you should slow down. You know, it's not good to... Shizune stopped her sentence as Tsunade sent her a glare that promised pain. The apprentice gulped and stepped backwards. Nobody even dared to interrupt Tsunade after they feared for their lives. Meanwhile, Naruto was hungry and just got downstairs as he just woke up. He slept last night long due to events and did something training by himself. He got curious when he noticed the household, especially the kitchen staff, frantically running back and forth carrying platters of food and returning with empty plates. Naruto's eyes got wide when one of the chefs came out of the kitchen carrying a huge bowl of ramen. The chef was none other than Ichiraku Tenuichi. Another person came out of the kitchen carrying a huge bowl of ramen. Naruto recognized this person as the chef's daughter. I am Ichan. Oh, good morning, Naruto kun. Good morning, I am Ichan. What's going on? We're here to celebrate today. The shop will be open later after lunch. For now, we're serving Tsunade Sama our best ramen. The girl explained as she walked to the dining area with Naruto following behind her. The boy was entranced by the ramen aroma. When Tenuichi and Ayame placed the bowl on the table, Naruto followed and took a seat beside his grandmother and began to cobble down the contents of the ramen. Ayame carried earlier. Everyone who was watching stopped dead in their tracks as they feared the, for the lost meals from life. They silently prayed to Kami that Tsunade won't hurt him for eating her food. Oh my! She's in a gasp as she slowly walked towards the boy to save him from the danger. He didn't know it. He just put himself in. Hmm? Tsunade grunted as she noticed one of her bowl from and got devoured by someone. To her everyone's relief, she just smiled and hugged her grandson and began feeding him with ramen. She then began to eat in the normal pace. She sent Shizune a death clear when she noticed her near the table, causing the young woman to flinch and retreat. Kushina released her breath that she didn't know she was holding. She thanked Kami that her son was safe. She remembered the time when she was still a chunin when her mother used to sozo sasi. Tsunade was unconscious for two weeks after using the technique and when she woke up she literally devoured all food that was served and ate a lot. Those who tried to stop her tasting her chakra enhanced fist and almost dying. They were revived later when she finished her meal. Arashi was remembered the incident, the same one. He just chuckled to himself when his wife hugged and began feeding Naruto. One week later, after the long week celebration of Tsunade's recovery, things have gone back to normal. Classes have been resumed, more buildings were added, more facilities added, especially the medical facilities. Advancing course have been added to the curriculum of Chunin level students and graduate students, which are extremely chakra control con conservations and meditations. That is almost the same with the Senjutsu training. They also allow the users to enhance all their skills and status for a particular amount of time, depending on the amount of chakra was stored and how long they were stored before release. During the week, Rokli and Kurama Yakumo were enrolled in the academy and very, very were given the same lessons as Naruto Batch had given them the opportunity to catch up. Also with the medical science recovery and knowledge with the human body, she was able to make new bodies for the two with the help of the Rinnegan powers. Using the yin and yang release, they created new bodies that have been enhanced, making them now qualified to face the harsh world of shinobis. After creating the bodies, they transferred Lee and Yakuma's soul to the new bodies with the use of Uzumaki Kenjutsu seals and the Rinnegan human path. The boy may now use and mold chakra, with the girls no longer ill. After the operation, they were introduced to Naruto's group. As this is where I'm going to be leaving this part of guys. I hope you like this one and if you do, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel. And this is Apollo Uchiha and I'm signing out.